This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Chapter 23. Non-Communist Anarchists Before we proceed, let me make a short explanation. I owe it to those anarchists who are not communists. Because you should know that not all anarchists are communists. Not all of them believe that communism, social ownership, and sharing according to need would be the best and most just economic arrangement. I have first explained to you communist anarchism, because it is, in my opinion, the most desirable and practical form of society. The communist anarchists hold that only under communist conditions would anarchy prosper, and equal liberty justice, and well-being would be assured to everyone without discrimination. But there are anarchists who do not believe in communism. They can be generally classified as individualists and mutualists. All anarchists agree on this fundamental position, that government means injustice and oppression, that it is invasive, enslaving, and the greatest hindrance to man's development and growth. They believe that freedom can only exist in a society where there is no compulsion of any kind. All anarchists are therefore at one with the basic principle of abolishing government. They disagree mostly on the following points. First, the manner in which anarchy will come about. The communist anarchists say that only a social revolution can abolish government and establish anarchy while individualist anarchists and mutualists do not believe in revolution, they think that present society will gradually develop out of a government into a non-governmental condition. Second, individualist anarchists and mutualists believe in individual ownership, as against communist anarchists who see the institution of private property as one of the main sources of injustice and equality of poverty and misery. The individualist and mutualists maintain that liberty means the right of everyone to the product of his toil, which is true, of course. Liberty does mean that. But the question is not whether one has a right to his product, but whether there is such a thing as an individual product. As I have pointed out in preceding chapters, there is no such thing in modern industry. All labor and all products of labor are social. The argument, therefore, about the right of the individual to his product has no practical merit. I have also shown that the exchange of products or commodities cannot be individual or private unless the profit system is employed. Since the value of a commodity cannot be adequately determined, no barter is equitable. This fact leads, in my opinion, to social ownership and use, that is, to communism, as the most practical and ec just economic system. But, as stated, individual anarchists and mutualists disagree with communist anarchists on this point. They assert that the source of economic inequality is monopoly, and they argue that monopoly will disappear with the abolition of government because it is a special privilege given and protected by the government, which makes monopoly possible. Free competition, they claim, would do away with monopoly and its evils. Individualist anarchists, followers of Stirner and Tucker, as well as Tolstoyan anarchists who believe in non-resistance, have no very clear plan of the economic life under anarchy. The mutualists, on the other hand, propose a definite new economic system. They believe with their teacher, the French philosopher Proudhon, that mutual banking and credit without interest would be the best economic form in a non-government society. According to their theory, Free credit, affording everyone the opportunity to borrow money without interest, would tend to equalize incomes and reduce profits to a minimum, and would thus eliminate riches as, re as well as poverty. Free credit and competition in the open market, they say, 
would result in economic equality, while the abolition of government would secure individual freedom. The social life of the mutualist community, as well as the individualist society, would be based on the sanctity of voluntary agreement of free contract. I have given here but the briefest outlines of the attitude of individualist anarchists and mutualists. It is not the purpose of this work to treat in detail those anarchists' ideas which the author thinks are erroneous and impractical. Being a communist anarchist, I am interested in submitting to the reader those views that I consider the best and soundest. I thought it fair, however, not to leave you in ignorance about the existence of other non-communist anarchist theories. For a closer acquaintance to them, I refer you to the appended list of books on anarchism in general. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.